Well, after a long break, I'm back. This video is about passing the journeyman exam, which I passed my first time. And as of right now, I am 43 subscribers away from being monetized on YouTube. So just as a congratulations to me for passing the exam, please subscribe if you haven't already because I'm in a race with my boy Brunger Builds. Is that how you pronounce it? Welcome back to Brunger Builds. Yep, he's exploding on YouTube and I need to get to a thousand before he does because I just, I do. So you're probably here because you have a journeyman test coming up and you're worried about it and I'm going to help you. So as many of my subscribers know, I spent four years as an electrical apprentice and I did primarily commercial work. Now I'm working in the office doing electrical design. I took a break from YouTube to focus on studying for the exam and to not think about YouTube numbers for a while. This is going to be a short video because the answer to the question, how do I pass my journeyman exam is a very simple one. Know the code book. And by that I mean you need to learn about the different articles of the NEC and you need to figure out where in the NEC they are located. That doesn't mean you need to know exactly what they say, that doesn't mean you need to memorize anything, and you definitely don't need to be a genius. Even still this may seem like a daunting task, but it really isn't. You probably just haven't spent that much time in the code. If you spent just a half hour each day flipping through the code from the front to the back, and then from there if you learn the sort of structure that each article is built in, then you'll be able to find the answers to the electrical exam questions fairly quickly. We were allowed to use a Tom Henry's keyword finder in the test, and that's a huge help. I know that anybody is capable of passing this test because I passed this test, me. I was never really good at tests, and I had a decent GPA in high school. Now, I took the Oregon's journeyman exam, which just means that alongside the NAC, we were also tested on our knowledge of the OESC, the Oregon Electrical Specialty Code. I don't know. It just, just means there's a handful of codes in the NEC that were either altered or removed altogether because Oregon. But even that is easy because I would read through the OESC and each section of the OESC that refers to a section or a code in the NEC, in the actual code book, I would highlight that green. Actually, every single question that I had on the journeyman exam, when I found the answer, I would look at where I found the answer in the code book, look at that article number, and then look that up in the OESC to see if there's an article that refers to that code in the NEC. I've learned over the last four years, there's a bunch of people trying to sell me on some online course. There's a bunch of people trying to sell me on some kind of a book to get from Amazon that's supposed to help, but you literally do not need any of that. There's no magic potion. There's no special book. There's no special technique. There's n none of that is real. It's all just trying to make money off of you. What you need to do is first of all, understand that the code is written in such a way, what the people who are writing the code are trying to do is they're trying to organize information in a way that's accessible. They're not trying to write the code book in a way that's hard to read. They're trying to make it as easy as possible. It's just, sometimes it's kind of complicated. What I'm trying to say is there's a structure to it. And once you understand that structure, then you will know where to look when you're reading a journeyman exam question. And that structure is not hard to figure out. You will, you'll start to feel it out the more you go through the code. I got really lucky because one of the teachers at my apprenticeship program gave me a bunch of tests that he wrote himself, practiced journeyman tests, and I would just do them over and over and over again. Sometimes I would start them and try to guess through them all. They were time tests on Moodle, and they were three hour tests, 52 questions, just like the journeyman exam, but some of them I would blast through them and I would just try to guess and just see how good I would do if I just guessed my best. And I did it over and over and over and over again. And then I started to actually look up the questions and see how long it took me. And so the first time that I started consistently getting a passing grade in it, I was getting like 75 or over as a passing grade. I had over an hour left. So I was doing them in under two hours, which means, which gave me some confidence because I knew that if I did the same thing at the actual journeyman exam, then I would have an hour to be able to look over all of my questions. I just, I felt very confident that I did a pretty good job. And I was, at the time, I was kind of scared to say that. But then I got a text from the director of the apprenticeship program. And I was told that I got the highest score out of all of the guys testing out this year which made me very happy because I am so dumb. Anyway, thank you for watching. Please, you guys, help me beat Brunger Builds. I need to beat this guy. Okay, this is has now become personal. I need to get to a 1,000 before he does. Does he put 16 hours a day into his YouTube channel? Yeah. Do I? No. 
does he deserve to get to a thousand before I do? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, <laughs> but yeah, if you guys could subscribe, maybe even tell a friend, the first thousand subscribers, I'm, I got a list going of everyone who has their subscription publicly shown to everyone else. And I don't know, I might start sending out some prizes to my first thousand because that's a very special number as somebody who's making YouTube videos. So anyway, I appreciate you. Hope you have a wonderful day. And most importantly, I really hope you pass that test. You can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. Peace.